Chairman, we're live. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Good morning to the uh, Hertfordshire Fire Pension Board. Today's date is Friday, the 14th of October. Uh, I am uh, Mark Mills Bishop, the uh, chairman of this uh, meeting. Uh, the council, I had to make an announcement, but the council will be holding uh, this meeting electronically. Members of the public may also attend this meeting in an electronic capacity, and there is a link on the council's website for them to do so. Members of the board are asked to keep their microphones switched off until called upon to speak and then to switch their microphones off once they had finished. Uh, cameras may be left on throughout the meeting if members uh, wish. Uh, if you experience connection or other technical issues, then it may help to switch your camera off. Uh, but cameras should be switched on if and when speaking uh, at the meeting. To indicate a wish to speak, uh, members should use the raise hand function. Um, use of the meeting chat function is only for voting. At the end of uh, each of uh, the items of debate, uh, there will be a vote. Members should use voting for the meeting uh, using the chat function, indicating for, against or abstain. I will then declare the result after each uh, vote. Uh, it is not a particularly heavy meeting. However, uh, should we uh, be uh, extended, then of course I uh, will allow a natural break as we go through. All right, well, we now turn to the uh, 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 agenda. Um, uh, there are no substitutes, and I believe everybody is here, so there's no apologies. I just want to uh, indicate there is a change of membership, and. Uh, uh, I pay warm welcome to John Bolter to the board uh, as a um, employer representative and uh, another equally warm welcome to Steve Bishop uh, as a member uh, representative. I would now ask uh, uh, each member uh, in the list that I've got in front of me uh, just to uh, 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 indicate who they are. And perhaps if I can start with uh, Simon, Simon Tuhill. Thank you, Chair. Good morning. Simon Tuhill, Assistant Chief Fire Officer for Hertfordshire Fire and Rescue Service and an employer representative. Thank you, uh, Simon. Uh, Darren? Thank you, Chair. Darren Scotchford. Uh, I'm an employee representative and also vice chair of the, the board. Good morning, everyone. Right, thank, thank you, Darren. Welcome. Uh, John Bolter. Good morning. Good morning, all. I'm John Bolter. I'm head of uh, business Governance and Finance in the Community Protection Directorate, and I am also an employer representative. All right, thank you, John, and uh, as I say, a warm welcome. And Steve Bishop? Do we have Steve? Oh, yeah. He's chairman, he's just phoned me. He's having problems getting in. I'm going to resend him the link and he's going to try again. Okay, we can catch up then with him. And uh, Dan Cooper, is that right? Yeah, that's right. Thank you. Yeah, good morning all. Uh, I'm an operational watch commander um, at Chesham Fire Station and I'm the employee representative. OK, all right. Well, good morning and welcome. And as I say, my name is Mark Mills Bishop, <coughs> uh, chairing the meeting today uh, and I am a county councillor. All right, well, we turn to part one of the uh, agenda and uh, I just want to ask the board to confirm the minutes of the meeting which were held on the 22nd of March as a correct uh, record. I'll come to uh, matters arising in a moment, but if we could indicate in the chat room uh, that you agree those minutes. All right, uh, thank you very much indeed. Those minutes are uh, agreed. If we turn to the minutes for any matters arising then, um, I hope everybody uh, has a copy of them. Uh, <clears throat> I think there was only 
two matters uh, for action. Um, if, but uh, if I um, is John online at the moment? Yes. Good morning, Chairman. I'm here. Ah, good morning, John. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to you. There, there, there were uh, your name appeared uh, against a number of actions, but but I would uh, assume you will cover those, will you, when we come to uh, to your report, uh, unless you've got anything you want to say about them. No, I, I can cover them. Um, I can cover them as part of the uh, the update from LPPA. All right, and uh, uh, and they're contained on page four, I think, page four. Uh, and page uh, six. And Thank the only you. other one I have is uh, Rachel, I think, um, on page seven. Did you want to add anything to that? That was under five, eight. No, there's nothing to add to that. Nothing to add to that. All right, then. Uh, all right, if we then move on then to, uh, <coughs> I think our uh, our, uh, our first report then, which is under item two, um, and the Local Pensions Partnership Administration, Firefighters Pension Administration report, and uh, quarter one for 22 and 23. And uh, John, we're back to you. Uh, you're going to present this, are you? Yes, I'll All right. present this. Thank you, Chairman. Good, Mo good morning. Morning, everyone. Morning. Um, bear with me a second. <clears throat> so I've, yeah, I've got an update for the board on the, the quarter one performance, um, which covered the period from April uh, to June. Uh, obviously appreciate that that um, was some time ago, so I will also provide the board with a, a further update as to how performance is um, more recently. Um, so the report, as we discussed previously, includes both uh, quantitative and qualitative measures. Um, so th they're not necessarily all contractual measures that we put in the performance report. Um, but they are things that that we believe we should should be measuring, uh, and we should we should be reporting what the, the member experience is um, from their interactions with uh, with LPPA. Um, so you may also know in the report that the format has slightly changed between quarter four um, last year and quarter one this year. Um, the reason for that is some of the um, the reporting. Um, capability has changed since we moved to our new pensions administration system. So the main the main difference is that the the help desk call data and the satisfaction survey data is not just in respect of Hertfordshire Fire and Rescue Service members. It, it's in respect of all members that are interacting with us across all clients. Um, just to confirm that in quarter four, um, we will reintroduce client specific data um, there, but at the moment it's it's unavailable. Um, but just to give you any, you know, just give you that that information. Um, moving on to the statutory obligations during the period. Um, so in in April we successfully applied pensions increase to to member records. Um, P60s were issued to to pensioner members. Um, annual benefit statements were due. Um, at, during quarter two so at the end of august we were due to send active and deferred members their annual benefit statements um, so we achieved 90 percent of active members and 97 percent of deferred members um, so we have a second abs run planned for the end of uh, november so the plan will be that that those um those remaining members that haven't received a statement yet will get one um, in the second run. If for whatever reason we've got outstanding queries that, that we can't resolve uh, in time for November, then we will still um, work with the employer to resolve those and issue a, a benefit statement um, after the end of, end of November. Obviously, the, the ultimate aim is that we get 100% um, of the statements out. And more recently, there was a statutory deadline on the 6th of October, um, which was for pension saving statements to be issued to any members impacted by annual allowance. And again, um, those those statements were issued um, to impacted members by the, the deadline. So just to recap on uh, performance uh, and some of the discussion that we had at the last board. Um, so as you will be aware, we are changing or in the process of changing our pensions administration system. Um, we're doing that in effectively two phases. Um, so the first was between January, February and March this year, where we moved um, eight, uh, nine of our clients, which was 300,000 members across. Um, and that's across the local government pension scheme, 
the fire and rescue service um, so it's mm. both schemes that we've been doing that for um, the second phase will be happening between um, October November and December this year so by the end of the calendar year we will be co completely on the new operating system um, that will be a lot easier for us to manage the service across all clients at the moment it's really complicated trying to do that across two different systems um, so we're on track to deliver um, the migration by the end of December um, to support with that huge transition um, we did speak to uh, the fire and rescue service and to um, Hertfordshire County Council and agreed temporary relaxed SLAs for the period um, between March April and May um, so we did have um, reduced SLAs in place although we obviously we were still making sure that we were prioritizing any any members um, awaiting payments from us there will be there will be two um, additional metrics that we're going to be including in the performance report again from quarter four, um, which we think are, are important. The first is the overall elapsed time of our processes. So how long is it taking end to end to complete each um, each process? Um, and we also want to be able to measure the number of members that are receiving uh, their first pension payment within 30 days of retirement. Um, because we, we want to adopt this principle of no breaking payment. So the, the ideal scenario would be if, if we have an active member that's retiring at the end of October, they receive their last salary, their last salary payment at the end of October. And then at the end of November, they should receive their first pension payment from us. So we want to start measuring that um, to see to see how, how many people actually do receive their payments. And for any that don't, we need to obviously investigate why that is and see whether or not we can improve the process on both sides to facilitate that. The Pensions Help Desk, we spoke last time about increased average wait times um, during uh, April, May and June. Um, the average wait time peaked at between 17 and 18 minutes uh, during the transition to the new system. Um, that was partly driven um, because we have something called a blackout period before we go live with each client. So there's effectively three to five working days where we can't actually process work. Um, and members were obviously um, contacting us to find out the, the the position of their their case. And secondly, we were communicating the new pensions put the new member portal to members to say that it's there, it's available to register, which created a spike in calls. Um, so since July. Um, we have maintained an average wait time of below three minutes in the help desk. Now, that is partly because um, the, the call volumes went back to BAU levels, but we also, um, I think I mentioned this previously, we did a couple of tactical um, changes to the way that we operate the help desk. Um, the first was that we recruited a dedicated help desk trainer um, to be able to upskill um, people within the business to take calls um, quicker. Um, and we also um, trained our web inquiry team to be able to handle calls during peak times of the day. So, for example, after a bank holiday, um, typically we, see, we, we see a, a huge spike in calls. Um, so what we've done now is we, we redeploy the web inquiry team to take calls during those peak times of day. Um, so during phase one's migration, the, the calls um, increased by about 20%. Um, which was quite significant um, since then. So when we started issuing the annual benefit statements to members, we saw a spike of uh, calls um, up to 10 percent and we managed to maintain wait times of below three minutes, which was good. So it, that would indicate to us that some of the action that we've taken has helped manage those spiking calls. Um, just to manage the board's expectations, um, I do think we will see a spike in calls again um, and an increase in wait times as we migrate the remaining clients across um, to UPM. Um, but hopefully some of the activity that we've that we've now taken will, will, will stop that average wait time peaking at about 17, 18 minutes again. So hopefully that that, that will, will manage that to a point. Um, the next thing I just wanted to mention to the, the board was the uh, member satisfaction scores. Um, so the way that the way that we've configured the new, the new system is that we will effectively triage work within 24 hours of receipt. So in the previous system, if we had a five day service level, typically um, if we received a piece of post today, we weren't looking at that process until the fourth or fifth day. So if we were actually missing information, then we were obviously losing time um, with processing the work. So 
in the new system, the the concept is that we'll we'll triage the process within 24 hours and make sure that we've got everything that we need to be able to progress it to the next stage. Um, early indications are that the um, the overall lapse time of processes is a, is a lot less as a result of that, and in particular the part that LPPA are in control of. But that isn't translating into increased satisfaction scores, um, particularly for the retirement process. Um, so our member engagement team are looking at the uh, the satisfaction surveys that have been sent back to us, uh, looking at the verbatim comments that we get from members to see what what else it is that's impacting the member experience when going through that that retirement process. Because we would have um, thought that if we were processing things um, quicker, that satisfaction scores would have increased, but that doesn't appear to have been the case. Um, so once we've done that that deep dive and, and got a better understanding as to what the feedback is telling us, we'll obviously communicate that with the the pension board and let you know what our action plan is um, to improve that experience. Uh, the next thing I want to mention to the board was the number of members that are registered for the new the new member portal pension point. Um, so when you when you migrated across to the new system, all of your members, even if they were registered previously, would have had to re-register for the new portal. Um, so at the end of June, you had 12% of your active members. 10% of your deferred members and 21% of your pensioner members registered for the portal. Um, when we issued the annual benefit statements, we did see a, an increase in the number of people that had registered. So actives went from 12 to 30%, deferreds went from 10 to 26%, and pensioners went from 21 to 38%. So we are seeing an increase in the number of members that are registering and using um, the new the new member portal. And the last two things I want to mention is the uh, data quality scores um, across the Fire and Rescue Service. So between March and June, the data quality scores um, took a slight dip. Um, so common reduced from 98% to 97.6% and conditional reduced from 97.4 to 92.4. Um, we will be reintroducing a trend graph so that you can see how that is moving around each period. Um, but I will say that we did expect a dip in the data quality because that is right in the middle of the time where we're processing the year end file that's sent across from the employer. Um, so until that's actually completely loaded and reconciled, um, we we would have expected a dip. Um, we would expect that to increase again during quarter three. And I've mentioned the uh, the second phase of the migration to our new pensions administration system. So the, the next client to go live will be on the 28th of October this this year. Um, so that's when the next client goes live and the and the, the last client will go live on the 5th of December. So we've got that window now where we're completing the, the migration. Um, what we will do is provide, rather than waiting for a quarterly cycle of performance, I will be providing officers with a more regular performance updates so that you can see any early warning indicators where we may be starting to receive um, more calls and those call wait times have increased, etc. So you'll you'll have um, you know have earlier visibility around what's happening rather than waiting for the the quarterly reports. Um, thank you, Chair. I'll pause there. Have to take any questions on on that update. All right. All right. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, John. Before I throw it open, uh, I just want to welcome uh, Steve. Steve Bishop has joined us. Welcome, Steve. A warm welcome to you. Uh, you had you didn't really miss anything uh, at all. I just went through the preamble, uh, which I which I have to go through. But uh, could you just introduce yourself to the other uh, members and the viewing public and uh, uh, as to who you are and, uh, and what you are? Yeah, hi Mark. Um, just my apologies. First, I um, had trouble getting into the the system this morning, but I finally got in. So, um, <laughs> my name is Steve Bishop. Um, I was a crew commander with Parks Fire and Rescue Service up until last year. Um, so basically, I'm here as a as a retired member now. Um, so I had, a, I had an invite to join the board some months ago, and made the application, and uh, here I am. Fantastic, and uh, and you are really w uh, uh, warmly welcomed. Uh, so Thanks. I hope I hope you enjoy the experience anyway, and uh, uh, and thank you for your service. There we are. So uh, so well done, well done, yeah. and you're continuing on. All Thanks right, let me get okay. Let, let me get back to questions before I throw it open. Uh, uh, John, you, you were talking about the transition over to uh, uh, phase two. Uh, 
lessons learned from phase one um, that you could put into practice, things that we need to watch out for, uh, things that you've got on your mind that uh, that prevent you from sleeping at night, uh, that you want to make sure doesn't occur or happen uh, in the phase two. Yep, uh, thank you, Chairman. Yes, yeah, so uh, the first, the first was um, in relation to the help, the pensions help desk, uh, which saw the increase in calls. So um, there were um, some, let's call them system bugs or hypercare issues, with members trying to register for pension point in phase one. Um, those issues have been resolved. Um, so we introduced a two-factor authentication login process. It was more secure for members to log in, um, but there were issues with members receiving their activation codes. So that's now been completely resolved. That won't that won't hit us again. Um, we've also um, introduced a separate um, IVR line phone line for members calling us specifically about pension point. We've got a group of individuals within the help desk that are skilled in um, being able to answer those inquiries quite quite quickly. So we're hoping that the pension point impact is a lot less uh, than it was previously. Um, the second was um, the the migration of the images. So imagine for every member record over a number of years, there's there's images that are obviously stored on the the legacy system. Um, and the plan previously was to migrate those across after go live on the basis that it would only take a few days to get those images loaded in. Um, in phase one, it took um, up to three weeks for those images to be loaded, which resulted in our administration staff having to navigate two systems. Uh, and in particular, our pensions health desk having to navigate two systems to try and um, handle members inquiries. Um, so we've taken a slightly different approach for phase two. We've loaded those images prior to go live. Um, so we're not expecting that to be an issue. Um, the third is there were um, there were hypercare issues. So the new system is built on a number of process maps, um, and where um, where there are bugs or issues, then they're either fixed by our system provider or they're fixed by our systems team. Um, and there were more more hypercare issues than we anticipated um, in phase one. Um, so when we move into phase two, we are literally using the same process maps because um, we've tried to standardise our processes across the schemes and across the clients. We're not expecting there to be the same level of um, hypercare issues um, that we had in phase one. And the last thing I'll mention, Chair, is, um, and I sort of alluded to this in the introduction, it is really complex for us at the moment trying to provide the service across two systems. 300,000 members on two, 300,000 members on one system and 300,000 members on another system is really difficult for us to manage, um, particularly when we have, um, you know, we have staff turnover, we have new people starting and we have that that dilemma around, well, which system do we need to train those individuals on? So it's been a real a real challenge for us um, up until now. So um, the, the, the anticipation is that actually after we're completely on the new system, things will become a little bit easier for us to, to manage. Um, but as I say, anything that is going to impact the service to either the County Council or the Fire and Rescue Service of Hertfordshire, I'll be giving officers an early early warning indicator and obviously putting some mitigations in around uh, what we're doing about those activities. Um, okay. and I think one of, one of the actions, Chair, was actually for us to provide an overview of the lessons learned, I believe. Um, I I have seen a version of that, so I'll make sure that that's shared before the next meeting. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah, that, that, that would be helpful, John. And, and a thank you for that information. If I could, uh, I mean, I'll probably come back a bit later about uh, resourcing and staffing and uh, uh, and how much of an impact that might be going forward, because I know that uh, uh, across many industries, there is a difficulty regarding uh, uh, staffing. Uh, just one other question, and I'm sorry uh, to my fellow board members, but the other question, you talked about uh, gremlins and problems and in, in in the IT in the system and that kind of thing. What kind of firewalls have we got in place then that, you know, let's talk about the wider aspect of uh, uh, of uh, cyber attack and that kind of thing. and. Uh, and that is very much a uh, a topic that is being talked about. But so what firewalls have you got in place for all that? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, so I'm not going to um, pretend that I know all of the detail, um, but our, our head of IT can certainly um, provide a full update. Um, but there's there's a number of um, firewalls that are in place um, across the, the organisation. Um, 
the one of the things that we do do is we do what we call penetration testing internally and we ask an external company to try and um, get in as it were um, so we do that periodically and obviously share the results of that with our um, with our audit and risk committee um, in terms of the what's actually in place it's probably worth me just taking that away and asking uh, our head of IT to just provide a summary in the next uh, cover report for the board yeah that 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 that, that would be helpful John all right okay uh, all right enough from me um, uh, I've got one or two people have flashed up now the first one I got is uh, Daniel Daniel over to you yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, apologies first if there's much background noise here, so I'm not at home at the moment. Um, John, my uh, the concern for me really, and is if there's anything we can do from a employee front, is that the 30 percent of active members that are signed onto the portal seems quite low. Um, is there any way that we could push that to encourage people to sign up more? Yeah, thank you, Daniel. Um, so yeah, there's so there's activity that. There's a schedule of work that LPPA's engagement team will undertake to try and encourage members to register for the portal. Um, I think at the moment, um, not all of the new functionality, we, we haven't made it all available yet. We're going to phase the rollout of that. Um, and obviously we'll be doing that um, with, with the Fire and Rescue Service to make sure that you're clear on what's going live when. Um, so there's, there's that side of it. Then obviously we've got the employer side. Um, so I'm sure that we speak about the instrument that you've got in place etc uh, but i think at the, at the moment members are typically logging in just to view their annual benefit statement they can run some estimates but there's not much else they can do so one of the functions that will be going live um early next year is something called track my case so anyone that's got an ongoing transaction with us will be able to log into the member portal and see what stage it's at and communicate with us via the portal so that's probably another reason for a member to log in um, gives them gives them another reason to, to actually log in and have a look at what's going on because there's more functionality. Um, the average number of members registered in the in the previous system, because that's probably a good example, um, because we had it for so long um, on the LGPS side, it was about 35 percent. And on the fire and rescue side, it was about 45 percent. So that was that was sort of your average number of members registered. Um, that's where it was peaking. Uh, but as I say, I'm hoping that some of the additional functionality that will be available will encourage members to to register and, and use it more, more, uh, more frequently throughout the year. No, that's uh, that's great, John. Yeah. So my um, uh, so if, if that's a, an average, as I 45 percent, and I'm presuming that a lot of these members are close to retirement, so they take an active interest in in their pension, and the others have possibly put it to to the side until it hits closer to their time. So, um, no, I just wonder if there's anything we can do, whether generating conversations on station to try and push out to people to be active members. But um, I'll, I'll take your advice on that. That's great. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Uh, Simon. Um, thank you, Chair. So. Um, uh, Daniel has covered part of my question around the uptake uh, and what what more LPPA are going to do to drive that but indeed what more the employer side can do so I know that I have sent out some communications to all of our staff and we're happy to do that again to try and um, to reach them again perhaps towards the end of the year when some of this new functionality is on the horizon because we can then signpost them to you know what they will be able to do which which becomes a selling point so very happy to look at that again um my second question if i may chair was just around the customer satisfaction so john um obviously the the, the charts look like there's you know a bit of a decrease um i would suggest and you, you'll be able to correct me that probably the help desk satisfaction is directly correlated to how long people are being held you know held in a queue for I, I think that's probably not too much of a leap but in terms of the ret retirement satisfaction scores dipping down can you give us a flavor of you know what sort of things are causing that because it's, it would be really interesting to understand if there's some systemic problems there yeah thank you Simon <clears throat> So there was it was a mix to be honest, but uh, obviously the retirement the retirement satisfaction from a member's perspective, obviously it's a uh, have I been paid on time? Did I get paid the right amount? And was it easy to complete the forms and go through the process? Um, and it's slightly different between the LGPS and uh, the Fire and Rescue Service, um, but 
the employer does play a part in that process. So if there's been a slight delay in us receiving the information, it's going to delay the, delay the whole retirement process. And similarly, if we've got an outstanding query, um, again, it may it may delay um, sending those retirement forms. Um, if we look at if I mean, it is a bit of a mixed bag. Tomorrow. Some of it is there was a delay in receiving my payment. Um, and some of that will be associated with the employer sending us information late or LPPA taking too long to do it. Um, as I mentioned, there were there were hypercare issues. There were issues with the processes when we went live, which did prevent us from um, you know processing those in the normal time scale. So there were there were delays. Um, other feedback is that the forms are not as clear as they could be. Um, you know that the whole interaction with um, actually completing the retirement process is complicated. Um, that was compounded by members then trying to call us to to be supported and then waiting. 18, 19 minutes to get through. Um, so it was a combination of things. Um, I mean, when this isn't going to happen overnight, um, but one of the things that one of the functionalities that is available in Pension Point is the retire and line function. So not, not, it's not going to be for everyone. Some people don't don't want to go through that process, which is absolutely fine. Um, those that do will be able to, to to be navigated through it online. So as they're completing their forms, the system will tell them if anything's missing and explain what they're completing um, and then obviously we'll be able to interact via the portal which hopefully will make it a smoother process but uh, you know I appreciate that's not something's going to happen overnight but the functionality does exist um, and some other uh, I know some, uh, um, some other funds across the country have started to use it successfully um, so as I say I'm to look at the uh, in particular the verbatim comments so they're the free text that people have put in there to see if there are any other things that we can be doing and uh, to be honest I'm happy to share that with the, the next local pension board what the result of that was. Great thank you very much noted. Yeah okay all right uh, thank you Simon yeah I, th I think it's important John that uh, you know for uh, uh, members and also those coming up for retirement there is that 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 uh, uh, transition uh, that is absolutely seamless as it goes through. Otherwise, uh, you know, we will have problems. Uh, can I ask a question of Rachel? Sorry to interject again. Um, have you had many complaints? Is your phone melting down with people coming on, on to you, Rachel? Are you uh, are you having sleepless nights as well? Um, it's not melting down, but we have had a few um, through the transition process and. I think there was um, one that came via the FBU about estimates um, not being produced. And I think that was slightly maybe related to the new way um, the system does the estimates. Um, and there was also one where um, somebody hadn't received their pension being paid and it was kind of stuck, I think, also slightly related to the new process. One of the, the hyper issues John was mentioning um, needed to be fixed before that could be um, put into payment. Um, so those are the ones that I'm aware of. Um, and I think just in general, I just say with um, Project PACE, um, the impacts on the employer, maybe kind of for the lessons learned, just uh -huh. that kind of process mapping, um, some of it did affect our employer processes. And I don't think that was kind of fully taken into account. So we were sort of actually having to do quite a lot of work as well to right. adapt the new processes without um, you know, too much notice that things were going to be changing. Right. Well, well, from an HR point of view, that's helpful, Rachel. Thank you. Uh, are we talking a large number or uh, or a few? Of the complaints, there was yeah. the estimates. There was quite a few in the estimate batch. I can't remember off maybe half a dozen. Yeah. And there was definitely one complaint um, about retirement delays to the retirement being paid. <laughs> right. um, yeah. That, yeah. Okay. That's what I I mean, from a from a board point of view, I mean, it is important that that we keep on top of all that and uh, and make sure that, as I mentioned earlier, those that retire on day one get their pension on day two, as it were. Um, you know, th there has to be that uh, uh, you know no interruption, if you like, of uh, service. Simon, you've come back in. Do you want to have a quick word? Yes. Here? So thank you, Chair. Um, just to, to follow up on Rachel, what Rachel said, I think, you know, we can't underestimate the outsized impact some of these uh, issues have on our yeah. workforce. Um, 
Uh, so it might only be low numbers of people, but it does have an impact, a big impact across fire and rescue. And so one of the things I think that I really welcome it is from John is that, um, and you mentioned it, Chair, is that tracking of uh, people who get their payments within 30 days of retirement. Yeah. I think that's yeah. a really important metric to understand that things are running smoothly. Yeah, no, no. And I uh, again echo that. And uh, uh, and I, I'm sure John won't mind if we hold his feet to the fire. Uh, in, in, in in regard to that. Uh, uh, all right. Um, are there any other questions from anyone? I don't uh, <clears throat> I don't see any lights on. Uh, if not, we can go to the uh, thank you, John, for, for that report. And uh, 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 and I do appreciate you being very candid and uh, and the comments that, that you made. But uh, I think you will take away anyway, uh, you know, from the board members, the, the importance of uh, uh, of uh, staff uh, getting their pension on time. Um, all right, well, the recommendation uh, is on my page one of item two. Uh, it may well be your appendix, uh, sorry, your agenda pack 11, but uh, recommendation is that the pension board note and comment, which I think we have done on the content uh, of the report, uh, if everybody could agree or disagree. I think we're all in agreement. Uh, I'm waiting on Theresa to, uh, uh, yep, yeah, item two has all been agreed. Uh, thank you very much indeed for that. All right, we're moving on to uh, item uh, three, and we have the Hertfordshire <coughs> Fire Pension Risk Register Report, and, uh, and we've got the finance manager, I hope, uh, Rob, and there you are, Rob, right on time. Uh, over to you. Thank you, Chair. Um, so my name's Robert Winterton. I'm the finance manager for the pension fund at Hertfordshire. And uh, the risk register or the Hertfordshire Fire Pension Risk Register is a modified version of the overall pension fund risk register, which incorporates both local government pension scheme and the fire pension scheme. Um, officers felt it was necessary to have a separate risk register presented to the fire board due to the differences between the two schemes. Uh, this risk register report will be presented to the fire board on a quarterly basis to provide any updates or new risks that have been identified or any changes to the analysis of risk and any changes to the risk control mechanism. As it were, the last fire pension board was postponed, uh, the report today looks at um, two quarters, um, January to March 2022 and uh, April to June 2022. The current risks that have been identified are shown in appendices A and B. Um, Appendix A is January to March 22 and Appendix B is April to June. We use a risk matrix, uh, matrix to analyse the likelihood or probability and impact or consequence of a risk. The assessed scores for each of these uh, two factors are multiplied together to produce an overall severity score. The risk matrix used is shown in Table 1, which is Agenda Pack page 46. It should be noted that there is an element of subjectivity within the risk scorings. Um, however, to mitigate against this subjectiveness, uh, there is a challenge process where offices, or sorry, officers will meet on a regular basis to discuss the calculated scores and will amend it as necessary. Uh, table 3, which is uh, in Agenda Pack page 47, shows a summary of the risk categorisations for the nine risks currently identified in the register. Um, what I'll do now, I'll just quickly go through the movements um, in the two periods. So yeah. from January to March, um, there was just one change in risk score. Uh, this was risk four, which is the weak data management increase is exposure to cybercrime. Yeah. 
Um, although this risk hasn't changed colour, it's still amber, um, officers felt that the likelihood of the fund being impacted by cyber crime had increased um, from unlikely to possible due to the po potential consequences of the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Then in the register from April to June, uh, there were three changes in scoring, um, but these all related to the risks around the administration service. So those risks that we've um, amended was risk one, uh, the fund is unable to contact members regarding their annual benefit statements. Risk two, the administration service provider does not comply with regulation, statute or procedure. And risk nine, project pace. Uh, the reasons um, why these uh, scores are uh, increased um, and we're looking back at, as at June 2020, um, following that implementation of the new uh, pensions administration system from Altair to UPM, um, a significant uh, a risk arose during the quarter with regards to process, uh, processing employer year end files to member records. Because of this, officers were worried that the delays to this process could significantly impact LPPA's ability to publish annual benefit stage statements by its statutory deadlines. Officers therefore made the likelihood of all of the risk from um, uh, to possible and the impact to major. But thankfully, um, as at the 31st of October, um, the ABSs were distributed um, and made the statutory deadline. I think it was a percentage of around 88%. Um, and the other 13%, um, they couldn't be produced due to reasons such as outstanding year end queries or system errors. Um, however, this should uh, these should be um, out by the end of November. Uh, so that's all I was going to go through. Uh, with the risk, but happy to take any questions. OK, all right. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Robert. I, th I think uh, just for clarity, I think you meant the 31st of August, did you not October? Uh, yes, 31st of August. Yes, sorry. Yes, OK. Getting yeah, confused so with my birthday. <laughs> oh, happy <laughs> birthday. <laughs> OK, um, right. Yeah, I, I did have a, a, a question around 4.1. Uh, but you, I think you've answered that for me about uh, cybercrime. Uh, potential uh, and, and and that's been done. Uh, all right, no, I, I don't have any 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 burning question at the moment. Uh, I look to my screen. Does anybody else have a question or a comment to make in relation to Rob's report? Um, this is where we play the music. Uh, and I'm not seeing anything there. Uh, I'll just hang on for one more moment. I think you've done well, Robert. Uh, well done. <laughs> no one wants to hold your feet to the fire at, uh, at this meeting anyway. All right. Uh, so thank you very much indeed uh, for that. Um, I go to my other one and uh, if there are no questions and then uh, the recommendation uh, is at uh, uh, 7.1. Uh, we're asking to note uh, there's been no additional comment uh, on on the report. So I think if we go into the chat room and either agree or disagree or abstain. I think that has been agreed, but we're waiting on official confirmation. Yes, uh, item three, the voting has now completed and agreed on the report. All right, Rob, thank you very much indeed. Uh, mm -hmm. Do appreciate thank that you, and uh, uh, well done. All right, and we go on to uh, item four uh, on the agenda, which is the uh, training report. Uh, I'm pleased that we have now. And uh, Taryn, uh, I think uh, you're going to talk to this one. Uh, over to you. Hi, I'm. Thank you, Chair. Um, so the purpose of this report is to present a draft training plan to board members. Um, we have talked about it in previous meetings, um, and this seems like the right time with the new members joining the board to put this into action. <clears throat> so 
the the pensions regulator requires that board members have um, a certain level of knowledge and understanding <clears throat> and that you have ad adequate training to uh, meet that knowledge and understanding. So this training uh, plan covers uh, three areas, which is fundamental knowledge requirements, pension scheme specific knowledge and current issues, and it will be delivered over various channels. Um, so I propose initially uh, that we arrange a session with the LGA to deliver the local pension board member training, which um, sets out the purpose of your role, the expectation, um, and also a, a technical update of where we are in terms of the age discrimination case, um, the Matthews case. Um, and also at the next pension board meeting, we have LPPA in to deliver a session on the history of fire pension schemes. Um, yeah. Also, you'll see that um, at the very top of the training plan, there's various pensions regulator toolkit training sessions, which you can do by e-learning in your own time. Um, I am required to keep a uh, log of all the training that board members have received. So if you do do anything that is outside of this plan or you do any of those toolkits, um, if you could let me know so I can update your training log to reflect that. So, yes, happy for any feedback, comments, suggestions. OK, all right. Thank you, Taryn. And uh, uh, I mean, I'm very keen, very anxious that we that we get this uh, you know, underway fairly quickly. And we can do that uh, at our meetings, can we not, uh, starting in December? Uh, uh, is that possible? Yeah, so I've reached out, out to LPPA um, to see whether their technical manager, Neil Lewins, uh, will be available to deliver the history of the fire pension schemes at that December meeting. And I've right. also reached out to the Blue Light team at LGA um, to ask for um, possible dates to, to deliver the, the member training and the technical update from them. And that would be a separate MS team session to the board, probably right. around two hours. OK, no, that 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 would be uh, that would be very helpful. And I think uh, on the um, uh, the firefighters um, uh, uh, annual conference, I, I'm attending that uh, next week, I think. Uh, week after next, I think, isn't it? Oh, is it? All right. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's certainly in my diary, and no, and no doubt someone will uh, will will, will uh, uh, remind me. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Um, all right. Now, do we have any questions on, on that? Uh, but uh, I mean, well done on that. And, and, uh, as I mentioned, I'm very keen that we uh, that we all have some kind of training and you know deeper understanding, including me. Uh, I mean, I'm a pensioner, not from the fire service, but. Uh, from another service, uh, emergency service, and uh, you know, and I'm very keen to understand uh, you know, an in-depth uh, 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 look at it. Um, any questions then coming up? I've got Darren. Darren has come up. Well done, Darren. Yeah, thank you, Chair. Um, it, it's not so much of a question; it's just a thank you to Taryn. Actually, I know this yeah. is something that we've discussed at um, boards for for some time. I'm not sure if I am. I think I might be the only original board member, and I know we've. Um, We've been talking about this for for a little while, so I'm really grateful for the work you've done. And yeah. it will certainly, I could certainly do with a bit of a refresh myself. You know, things <laughs> move, particularly with the current <laughs> issues. But yeah, really, really pleased to see this is uh, is now taking some shape. So thank you, Taryn. Yeah, yeah, well done, Taryn. Yeah, and I, I I'm certainly looking forward to to, to it as well. Um, right, do we do we have any more questions coming up? Uh, I will play the, the music again to make sure that there's a delay. Uh, no, we're OK. All right. Well, the recommendation uh, is on my agenda pack 58, which is page two of the report uh, at 3.1. And uh, again, that uh, we approve the draft training plan and commit to uh, undertake training so that we can develop our knowledge and better understanding. And, uh, uh, and I'm certainly looking forward to it. So if we go to the chat room, we can vote on that.
that uh, word on Terran, that is, I think, agreed, but I'm waiting on official confirmation, um, which will come flashing through on my screen, I'm hoping. Uh, I can almost feel the heat coming from uh, Teresa's fingers as she types. Mm -hmm. And that has been agreed as per the report. So uh, well done, Taryn, on, on that. All right, well, thank you, everybody. We're going on to the last item, which is uh, uh, dates of the uh, next meeting. Uh, I momentarily lost my page, but I've got it back again. Uh, so really, it's a question uh, of uh, noting the dates for the meetings of 21, 22, and then going on to 22, 20. Three and our next meeting is in December, uh, so we have some virtual mince pies uh, on uh, on view, uh, and that's on the 16th of December. We then go into the new year uh, to 2023 uh, on the 23rd of March, and then we have uh, uh, hopefully a nice hot uh, summer of the 19th of July, 2023, and all those. Uh, start dates are um, at 10 a.m. So if you can note those in your diary, uh, and if you have any problems, you can let uh, Teresa know fairly quickly. Uh, and the final item, there's no other business in, in, in part one. So I've come to the uh, uh, end of the meeting. Before I formally close, uh, I thank everybody who has tuned in. Um, I hope it's been informative. I uh, thank John and Steve uh, for their first meeting. Uh, I'm sure they will get their feet under the table and I'm sure they will have uh, questions uh, uh, later. Uh, but I do warm, warmly welcome you, John and Steve, to, to the board. Um, and I thank everybody, officers included, for, um, uh, for preparing the report. Uh, and I thank Theresa for uh, her administration, because without her, uh, I wouldn't be here. Uh, so thank you, everybody. Have a jolly good weekend uh, and uh, look forward to seeing you again at a future time. All right. Well, goodbye. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.